Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to go over rounds 4 and 5 of Zagreb Open. Uh, two games which I have mixed feelings about. Okay, uh, I, I won't give a, a long introduction. Uh, I'll just go straight on to the games and I'll try to tell you my feelings about them as, as I go along. So after the first three rounds, I had one and a half out of three, one draw, one loss, one win. Uh, a good plus score. Uh, I was, I think, about six or seven points points up. And in round four, I faced uh, Damian Horvat, who is a very strong young player from Croatia. I think he is about 20 or 21, incredibly strong, and he increased his rating by 100 or 200 points in the last year or so. I remember playing him last year in the Zagreb Open, he was just above 2000, so at least 100, 150 points. And not only that, I think his, his uh, playing strength is higher. Uh, he played one tournament this summer in Croatia and he had an incredible score beating much stronger players. So anyway, a very dangerous opponent who plays the Sicilian uh, almost always. Sometimes he would he will play the English defense or the Owens defense with b6 against e4. And I I assumed he knew that I usually he plays the Nidorf, so the d6 Sicilian. I knew he usually he probably knew that uh, I played the Prince Sicilian most often. So I wanted to surprise him, and I'd prepared <clears throat> I'm sorry I'd prepared something which I've never played before, which was the case in almost every game this tournament. Uh, so when we reached uh, the position after after the knight of so c5, knight of 3, d6, d4, c, d, knight d, knight of 6, knight c3, a6, I played the Zagreb variation with g3. And I've never studied the variation up until the day before the game, so just after round 3, when the pairings got out. Uh, and once I started uh, looking for a system I was going to play against him, I really liked it. And I think the Zagreb variation is very fun, very flexible, hard to play for black. I've heard from some other Nidorf players that they hate facing it, and I can agree with that. Just the amount of control white has over d5 is uh, uh, increased compared to, to other variations. So basically the branching in the position is whether black wants to go for a Scheveningen structure or a Nidorf structure, meaning he can either play e5 or e6. I've prepared for at least five or six hours for, for both moves. Uh, Damian played uh, e5, which is the Nidorf move. Now the point is, you don't go knight b3 like in other variations, you go knight to e2. And the thing with the knight on e2 is, uh, you can play knight e2 because you don't, you're not blocking in your bishop, your bishop is fianchettoing. And then afterwards, you can play knight to d5, and then you can go knight e2 to c3, increasing control over d5. And in conjunction with the bishop on g2, you now have a pawn on e4, two knights ready to jump in, a queen on d1, and the bishop on g2. So immediately you have doubled your control over the critical square in the position. And now, of course, there are theoretical ways for black to fight that, but if you are unfamiliar with them, then it's hard. Uh, bishop e7, I played bishop g2, uh, he castled, I castled, he played b5, which I've expected, and this is all normal so far. And now knight d5, I'm not afraid of taking, if he takes, uh, I take with the queen, he needs to play rook a7, because the rook is attacked and my position is comfortable. Uh, instead, after knight d5, he played bishop b7, and now the point uh, of the Zagreb variation, knight e2 to c3. And you can see the amount of control I have over d5. Of course, b4 is impossible, I would just take it with the d5 knight. And black now needs to be careful. Uh, he played knight b to d7, trying to finish development. I played bishop e3. I want to be stopping knight b6 as much as I can. This has now become the second critical square in the position. So for the moment, I'm stopping uh, knight b6. Uh, rook to e8 was played by my opponent, and I played a4, which is a normal move to undermine the knight or four extended queenside pawns for black, and the very standard queenside attack. And basically the best way to play the Zagreb variation is to strike on the queenside first, and only then think about stuff like f4, f5, g4, g5, 
even though you could immediately go for let's say g4 g5 and dislodge the knight or force it to take on d5 and then continue with f4 i've been over a lot of very interesting games with different attacking plans but i liked a4 best and here uh, my opponent went badly wrong uh, there is only one way to try and keep equality in the game even though white is always slightly better uh, in this position he should have played bishop takes d5 simply giving up his light squared bishop to reduce the control over d5 and after knight takes d5 knight takes d5 queen takes d5 knight b6 i would have to give up my bishop back bishop takes queen takes and now after queen takes b6 i would take a b5 queen b5 pawn takes pawn takes and this is an opposite colored bishop uh, almost end game in which white has a slightly better pawn structure because of black's backwards d6 pawn Black has a slightly worse bishop, but even though it's around plus one or, or a bit more, uh, it, it should be a draw, especially because he is much stronger than me. And uh, I think he would definitely be able to draw this game. Uh, and, and I mean, it's safe enough. Instead of that, he played a move that made no sense, in, in my opinion. He played bishop f8. And this now just loses a pawn. Now, of, of course, I took a b5. And if he takes back, I just take with the knight. Uh, it loses a pawn, but it gets uh, it gives him the ability to play the early f5, which in my opinion was not enough, which is why I had uh, a think before taking on b5. The, the thing is, is, b f is, is f5 scary? If it's not scary, I can win a pawn. If it's scary, I should think three times. But I, I judged that it wasn't scary at all because I always have queen d2 and I have f3 to undermine the structure, which is exactly what ended up happening. So I took a b5. Knight d5, of course, now if uh, if I take with the knight, uh, I, I'm not winning a pawn because he can take back, so I need to take with the pawn. And now f5, that's the point. To win a pawn, I needed to get rid of my e4 pawn, which allows f5. But as I said, before I'd taken on b5, I had seen the move queen d2, and now black has nothing. Black is just... Black is much, much worse if not losing. He played the move e4, which I've also anticipated but i've already decided that i was going to play the move f3 and now my plan is to take with the bishop on f3 transfer the bishop to e2 basically win a pawn on a6 or or get my knight or bishop here and and after he takes f3 i took with the bishop and i offered the draw because i had a very good reason to do so uh, not because of the game, I was pretty confident that I could have won and I've been feeling guilty about that since the tournament. I don't want to go into too much detail about why I did it. It had nothing to do with the game or my opponent or the fact that I was nervous or scared or whatever. It just... Uh, okay, I just offered the draw because I had to leave. And he accepted, of course. We, we talked briefly after the game. Uh, he said that he was lost. I... I I couldn't really agree that he was completely busted. Uh, I would say white is better, but it still takes some time or technique and or both to win the game. So so let's say after bishop takes f3, he plays something like queen e7, I go bishop d4, this was my plan. Maybe a b5, knight b5, I don't know, knight e5 can be annoying, I would probably trade a pair of rooks. I don't know. A position like this, of course, is better for me. I'm a pawn up, have a better pawn structure, have a better bishop pair. But yeah, still has to be one. Anyway, uh, I'm going to give a bit more detail about why I had to draw in, in the in-depth video on the game I publish on Patreon, but I don't want to talk about it here. Okay, uh, now, the, the second game I'm, I'm going to show you today uh, was round five, and this game I was... Uh, preparing for for a long time and I'm going to tell you why so after having drawn in route round four against Damian uh, I was I had a good plus score I don't remember how many points but probably 13 or 14 so I was happy with my performance so far and the opponent I, I faced in round five is an extremely extremely dangerous player uh, he used to be close to 2300 but in the last year or so, his rating dropped, but his strength increased. I don't know how that makes sense, but he's been scoring much better against stronger players, IMs, FMs, even Grandmasters, but his rating dropped. So, okay, I don't know. 
maybe he lost to some lower rated opponents. I played him in the Croatian league, he destroyed me in 20 moves. And uh, why is it tricky to prepare for him and to play him? He plays the English or knight f3 uh, and can enter 20 different systems within the two openings via 20 different move orders and you never know what he's going to play. And he also plays the Nimzo Larsen on occasion, b3. So preparing for f3 and c4 flexible English Reti type King's Indian attack systems is very hard. The first time I played him, I played uh, d5, bishop f5, e6, c6 uh, and had some trouble with my b7 pawn. I was also black. He ended up putting enormous pressure on my queenside and winning. So for this game, I'd prepared the queen, uh, Queen's Indian defense setup, uh, which transposes to a symmetrical English, and then it's sort of a hedgehog type setup. It's very hard. These English ready systems never really have a name. Okay, so he played knight f3. So he either plays knight f3, c4, or b3 on move 1. Played knight f6, he played c4, and now I played b6, going for the Queen's Indian defense setup. g3, bishop b7, and again I played something I've never played before in my, my life, because I wanted to adapt to my opponent... Uh, as much as I could. I don't want to restrict myself with my own repertoire. I am trying to adapt to what my opponent feels least comfortable in, in every game. And in Zagreb it's, be, it's been going well. So bishop g2, e6, uh, castles, and now c5. And this is now almost the symmetrical English, but I, I really have no idea whether this is the Queen's Indian or, or the symmetrical English. I don't think... Uh, if, you, if you know, please let me know. So he played knight c3, bishop e7, rook e1, and now d5. Uh, an expansion uh, in the center, uh, which, uh, which gives black space and will leave black either with an isolated queen's pawn or with hanging pawns on the uh, d5, c5. He took cd5, ed5, and he played d4, which I had expected trying to weaken my center. Now I have a couple of options. The problem with the move c4 immediately, trying to keep my pawn stru structure intact, is that he can immediately play b3. And th this would be quite loose. I mean, I considered it briefly, but I'm running into trouble on, on, like on the c4 pawn. I have to trade my bishop off. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep my pawn. I, I didn't want to calculate all of that, and it just seemed weird. To do all of that while my king was in the center, so I accepted the fact that I may be playing with hanging pawns and castle. He played bishop f4, which after the game we discussed, we both agreed that bishop f4 is a bad move and a bad square for the bishop. I, I said that I wanted him to play bishop g5, I thought that was just much better trading his bishop for my knight, because his dark squared bishop doesn't really have that much scope. And I think my, my f6 knight is much stronger, especially after rook e1, because the e4 square is very tender. So I'd have pref preferred bishop g5 and just snap that knight off and, and play with the two knights. Uh, but yeah, bishop f4, I don't know, seems like a logical square, I, I didn't like it. He didn't like it either, but I, I think he suggested something like bishop e3 even, which may not be a bad idea, I, I like it to increase the pressure over c5. I played knight c6, which is a normal move, and now dc5. And here, as I said, isolated queen's pawn or hanging pawns. Taking with the bishop is very aggressive with knight e4 to follow. But uh, I didn't like it because he is a very strong opponent. Giving him structural weaknesses to target and having to go for dynamic play is uh, a risky strategy. So I ended up taking with the b pawn. Uh, I think my hanging pawns are quite strong in this position. He played rook c1, played rook c8. And you might be wondering, well, why did I play rook c8? Is bishop h3 not a good move? I'd considered that for a long time before playing rook c8, but I judged that him playing bishop h3 and me playing rook back to a8 is an improvement for me because the bishop is much worse on h3 and my rook is fine on a8. So he did play bishop h3, I played rook a8, and now his bishop is worse. So I think the best move is actually bishop g2. Uh, and after the game, we discussed bishop h3 as well. He said that it wasn't a good move. I don't know, maybe it was 
a good move, but I think the bishop is just much worse on h3. It's not doing that much. I, I don't like it on h3. Okay, and here he played knight a4, which was a part of his plan to target my weak hanging pawn on c5. And I was happy to see this move because uh, I was only worried about one thing after knight a4. So I don't want to play c4, I don't want to play something loose, uh, I don't know, uh, like queen a5, that would be a bad move. Uh, I want to play knight e4, attacking and defending at the same time. And I only have one problem here. Can he play knight e5 or not? That was, that was the only issue. If he can play knight e5, then he should be slightly better. And I, I don't have a way to defend both of my pawns, and he, my, my structure, my hanging pawns are probably going to collapse. Uh, and if I have to take on, on e5, he has a very strong bishop pair, and he can continue with doubling up his rooks, playing queen b3, attacking my b7 bishop. It could become very hard to defend. Okay, uh, but uh, when I was calculating knight e4 and calculating knight e5, and this took me probably 20 minutes. This was my longest think of the game. I've decided that knight e5 doesn't work because of g5. And when I played knight e4 and he played knight e5, I was surprised because he's very strong. And I, I'd, I'd, I was sure that I have calculated g5 precisely and that it just has to be much better or winning for black. But still, after knight e5, I had a double, triple, quadruple check for another 20 minutes because in a critical position if you mess up you you lose your advantage or miss a chance for an advantage and even if you spend half or more of half of your time on the clock and play the best move you should have an overwhelming advantage so I had a double triple check the thing is in this position the move g5 attacks the bishop attacks the knight and attacks the a4 knight indirectly. So if he moves the bishop, his knight is hanging, so he has to take on c6. That's the only move. He has to take on c6. Now that he takes on c6, his knight is attacked, his bishop is attacked. So after the move g5, it's not easy to keep a piece. The only way to keep a piece, which I've seen before I played knight e4, is to play f3. Or bishop e5, but bishop e5 is weird. Uh, so after g5, he has to take, has to take. And now bishop e5 in my opinion, runs into d4, and again, he has to play f3 eventually. The only difference is that my structure is now slight, slightly more secure, my d pawn is advanced. So here, I would play something like queen d5, and bishop takes d4, c d4, f e4. And queen e4, he would have to give up the exchange on c6. This was my analysis after the game when I tried to conclude whether bishop e5 was better than f3. I didn't check this game with an engine. Uh, and I concluded that f3 was better. So after g5, uh, he has to take the knight, I have to take, uh, and he has to play f3. And now after f3, uh, it, he's not losing a piece, it's a piece trade, but I'm opening up his king position, and he's in a lot of trouble. So g takes f, uh, f takes e, f takes g, and he, he can't take here really because it's... I'm going to take on h2 with tempo, so he takes on g3. And here I had a long think, and despite having had a long think, I messed up. Uh, in the analysis at home, I found a move that's just crushing, and the move that I should have played is queen d6. Uh, queen d6 is a very good move. Queen d6 threatens queen h6, uh, king h8, rook g8, and eventually something like bishop to h4 or bishop to d6. So let's say he goes king g2, which I think is the best move, has to defend. I would just go king h8, and after e takes d5, bishop takes d5 check, he would have to play e4, and I would go rook g8. And in this position, I believe white is just busted. I don't think there is a way to defend this with my bishop pair and... Uh, and without him having a dark squared bishop, which is also very important because my king is sort of tender on the h8 square. Another thing after after queen d6, and let's say he goes king to king to h2, trying to get away from this bishop, I could just go uh, queen to h6, and I would follow that up with bishop to d7. This is very hard to defend. It may seem easy, like go 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 rook h1 and bishop d uh, d7 and king to g2. But it's still very hard. 
I don't know what, what I play here. I had a bunch of analysis here. I can't remember it now. It was more than two weeks ago. But uh, but queen d6 was a much stronger move than what I'd played in any case. Uh, I played queen c7, which attacks the g3 pawn, same thing, but doesn't allow queen h6. And since he played now king h2, if he'd played king g2, then still king h8, and, uh, and I would do the same thing. But he played king h2. And now I don't have queen h6, which is a very strong move. And here, I thought for about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe more. I had about half an hour on the clock. He was already near to time trouble, 10 or 15 minutes on the clock. And I couldn't see what to do. Uh, I couldn't see a way to win. I couldn't see a way to dramatically increase my advantage. And I saw complications. All of a sudden... From a position where I thought that I was winning, both of our kings are naked, and he has stuff like rook c3, rook f3. Rook f1, uh, rook c3, rook f3, knight takes c5, uh, I don't know. It seemed very complicated. And the, the, the obvious move here, which I have to play if I want to go for an advantage, is taking the pawn. Not only to be able to take the pawn, but to be able to play something like e3 and then continue putting pressure on his position with something like bishop to d6. But I was afraid. I was afraid of knight takes c5. I don't know why, but I was afraid of knight takes c5. In, the, in my analysis at home, I just saw that something like rook a to d8, queen to c2, and rook d6, or even bishop d6, and he is completely busted. Knight takes e4, I would just go rook g6, and he can basically resign. So, taking on e4 was a good move. Even rook c3, which was my, which I was worried about, is ridiculous. That's that's a horrible move. There, I, I can just go queen a5 and win, win the knight. So... So yeah, I couldn't see what to do, started getting nervous, uh, and I saw a safe move, which doesn't lead to any problems, and that's bishop takes a4. And after bishop takes a4, queen takes a4, the position is almost equal. Uh, I can't win the pawn anymore, my pawn is not hanging anymore, I'm still looking forward to stuff like bishop d6, but it should be fine. So after bishop takes a4, I offered the draw, which I'm very ashamed about. But I was stressed. I had a great result at the tournament so far. I was really afraid of my opponent. And having had a better position, uh, I was afraid that I was going to mess it up. And not only that, I just, after king h2, I just couldn't see d takes e4 working and being much better, which is horrible. I mean, if I was playing this in a training game, or if I was analyzing this at home, or if I was watching somebody else play, I, I would laugh at bishop takes a4. That's a ridiculously bad move in this position. If I were playing a blitz game, I would take on e4 in a second. If I were, I don't know. I think I would win this game 9 out of 10 times against opponents, my rating, but have to consider stress and fear and being a coward at some, uh, during some moments. So yeah, I'm not I'm not proud of my results in in these two games. The first one is justified, and yeah, I just I needed to go. The second one, I was a coward. I was a coward, and I was weak, and I was too stressed, weak psychologically, and I need to work on that. This wasn't a chess-related problem. This position has to be converted. This was a psychological issue, and I need to work on that. But yeah, still uh, rating-wise, a good score. Um, Drawing against a high-rated opponent was fine, earned some points, and yeah, it was okay. So those are the two games. Uh, let me know what you think about them. Let me know what, what you think about this final position and bishop a4 and the draw offer. I mean, I know what you think. You probably think the same thing I do. It was horrible and cowardly. But if you can give me some advice, uh, if you've ever faced that issue, please let me know what you did. I would really love to improve. Uh, in, in that aspect of the game, psychologically. Okay, uh, see you tomorrow, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.